And this is typically where we do international calls that we um, let people know that we are uh, recording the session, but that if uh, someone has an issue with it, then they should leave now. So while Dan is setting that up, I, I don't know if anybody meant, uh, uh, let's see, recalls uh, the Beacon 7 land page. And I had a short story to, uh, to inspire. I had, uh, last winter I had rescued some living plants that were abandoned on the downtown street by my streetcar stop. And in the spring, by lucky chance, they bloomed. When I took that, um, this month, I've been working on a major opportunity for change making, but my project was dying. I was despondent and I went to the roof and I saw my red blooms. <clears throat> my experience with change work has been hard. <sighs> it's so close to me, it's still hard. <clears throat> There are no guarantees. I took the photo and in the image, I could see the construction crane in the background. It was my future home for a climate change project. Ironically, the image related to my systems change work also, the urgent and the important, the local and the distant. Saving plants were urgent. The new home for climate change was important. Rescuing plants is local action and climate change is distant work. Even the city couldn't speed up the construction when indigenous artifacts were dug, were found and unearthed. Maybe helping plants to survive could give me the courage despite the huge odds to walk a tightrope without a guarantee. I'm happy to say that my application for change application um, for action and awareness funds was submitted yesterday. There's still no guarantee. But how we personally respond to urgent matters may not matter, but sometimes it can support unconnected important work that is distant. So we will go into the breakout rooms now and, um, you know, we will talk about the systems changes that are most present for you and whether there is the ability to hold both the ur urgent and the important or to reorder our priorities in terms of our work and our time. Dan. Thank you, Kelly. Um, so just so you know, You'll have 15 minutes in the breakout, okay? Um, hopefully that'll give folks enough time. Uh, the other thing is there's going to be a two minute countdown, okay? So it, as you get down to th 13 minutes, it'll count down. Um, all right, so have a great time and we'll talk to you soon. Yeah, I was wondering, Kelly, did you want to give people an opportunity to uh, summarize what happened in the breakout or do you want to do that at a later point? Well, I don't know about summaries as such, but I don't know if anybody has any comments and maybe we can go around the three groups and just um, ask, ask for some comments I, um, on, on our time. If we had, um, can we have up to five minutes per group if, if anyone wants to have comments? Um, uh, yes, uh, five minutes is plenty. Uh, so in uh, our breakout room, uh, the central topic of, uh, very much around the reflections around COVID-19, uh, which I found was quite um, deep and quite um, uh, 
uh, in reaching. So um, I think all of our group except, uh, I think again, they didn't get to speak. Maybe uh, you would like to share. Uh, so, so it's really um, COVID-19 should have, well, have provided um, as such opportunities for us all to reflect and to see, uh, uh, to see things from a, a different uh, lens and, and, um, and to uh, reprioritize um, what is important in our, in our lives. Um, I think when we, were, when we ended, I think uh, 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 Bridget was just getting to something very deep. Uh, uh, she was analyzing why young people have such a urgent need to go to the bars to socialize and then reflecting on how a market has commercialized or conditioned uh, young people to see uh, connections in the public in the social setting as the only way of feeling connected. And I think Christian also raised a important point about uh, wording use, social distancing versus physical distance. I think social distancing has such a connotation that as if we're not supposed to connect. So instead of taking the COVID time to reflect, to really connect, I think I'm, I'm speaking, I'm, I'm interpreting Christian's words, really connect at a deeper level. And oh, Patrick, um, Joanne, yeah. is there anyone um, from your group that, that wants to um, also um, uh, give any comments from the first breakout? Uh, yes, please. So, so I'm just quickly summarizing what. Uh, so, the, every topic that was we great. have to Thank build. You. Well you know, done. Build uh, on top of what um, we're all um, shared. Uh, Petra and, and Bridget Normally. also touched on jobs. You know what happens to uh, pensioners, government paid workers versus people who are uh, small businesses, freelancers. So I'll let, um, why don't uh, we, um, uh, Ian, I think you haven't gotten a chance to speak, why don't you? So that's a, basically a big summary of what we've, uh, oh, you did, I, I, I think Ian, you did speak, you first uh, spoken about how the virus changing uh, the system. And I think I'd love you to elaborate on that. Dan, um, uh, from your group or from Dan's group, um, th thank you, Joanne. Um, Dan, um, moving on to your group, is anyone from uh, Dan's group that has any comments? Actually, I joined uh, Joanne's group, so we oh, you only did? had two breakouts, yeah. yeah. It was oh. fun in there. It yeah. was such a discussion. I just thank you to all. Just... Okay, so, so that, that means um, my, um, my group. Um, does anybody have any comments? It, it was a wonderful uh, conversation. Thank you. All right, well, some, while, while somebody's taking off their mic, I will just um, make an overview that, that there was um, the, this sense of um, disjointedness between systems, and th that wasn't necessarily bad. Um, I really appreciate Sab Sabrina saying about the positiveness uh, uh, in terms of, of what COVID has brought to her. But if you wanted to speak um, for yourself with regards to that, um, please join in. Yeah, just saying that it creates diverse other opportunities and uh, actually uh, it got me to totally change my priorities and what what is actually important and urgent right now for me. Uh, a few months ago, I would have never expected to actually lend in such a surprising way into the life that I was actually yearning for. And um, I was actually yearning, I was, anyway. Um, and so, yes, from this, uh, from, from this massive crisis said probably for many crisis that COVID is being, it's actually been an opportunity for me to get out of my usual life, let's say, and, uh, and, and just grab new opportunities and find myself to, and it's impressive. It's the way systems change all of a sudden. I mean, you, you find yourself uh, just transported somewhere else with uh, not much of a 
of thinking, you know, to just stop and, and um, yeah. Yeah, Yanis, um, you know, I, I was interested in your comment. It was, it was quite um, uh, quite clear. And I don't know if it's because you have joined us in other systems, uh, um, uh, global uh, change day systems before, but uh, um, I, I don't know if you wanted to um, make any uh, comment with regards to um, um, the, the topic at hand. Um, can you just elaborate more what exactly you would like me to elaborate on? <laughs> I, I, I was just uh, making the reference that you seem to be uh, quite clear in terms of both your systems as well as what was important and, and urgent in, in, uh, in your life right now. Um, yeah, it, it, it is because it's very much related to my current life and the thing that is changing almost every day. Um, what I would like to add to what I said is that uh, uh, as I'm re reordering my, prior my priorities, my new importances bring new urgencies. Uh, yes. <laughs> uh, change is messy. <laughs> Very modest terminology you use here. <laughs> uh, okay, anybody else? And anybody want to comment on, on what they also heard? Uh, in our group, uh, the conversation was lovely, and and uh, um, and I, I think that uh, it was Catherine that was reflecting on what Lena had said. Catherine, Lena, no. Mm. Catherine, go ahead. <laughs> Um, yeah, no, I think, I think this is interesting because I think um, it's not that I was caught off guard, but I, I don't think I've, I've really um, had considered my experience through a systems lens. And I think what was really interesting as I was hearing others speak, I think what became really clear to me was that where previously a lot of my work has been with organisations and bigger units, what I'm really seeing and being drawn to now is now the, the working with the much more one-to-one -one kind of aspects so I think it was helpful for me to come in feeling like it was actually I, I wasn't I had an element of, of of being unclear but actually as I heard people talk and started to reflect more about what I'd said it, that there was actually things were perhaps much clearer than I had first anticipated but yeah just that opportunity as things are shaken up realizing that you have an opportunity to reflect and reconnect with perhaps what's important and what might have got pushed to the side and and um yeah how to move forwards with that yeah okay. one reflection kelly can i make a reflection please please nick please <laughs> um i think one of the things that arose for me and, and arises fairly consistently around systems um, Lena and Catherine and I and myself, I think we all talked about large systems that we were involved in in one way or another. And I find um, it can be challenging with respect to large systems. Um, it's easy to feel kind of helpless that you can't change them. Um, and I think that's that's a real through line in, in my life. Um, and I, I think in many people's lives, when you're faced with something that seems immense and, and super complicated, that you can't find a way in. Frankly, I think that's why, where, where conspiracy theories come from. It's, it's a way of coping with not knowing. But, um, but that's, that's the theme that was arising for me, Kelly, yeah. You know, I, I was just about to comment that I think that anchor is too strong of a word, but but there were, there were times that was almost like this angry tone, um, you know, speaking about some of the situations that we find ourselves in right now. So Dan or Joanne, if you can give me a time, uh, time count of as, as where we're at. But while, while we're trying to figure that out. Um, we're at 1022, uh, Kelly. Okay. And so... So should we move? Um, should we move? We're going to do the polls now, right? Let me explain okay. the poll thing. Okay. So uh, hopefully everybody can hear me. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to do some polls, and hopefully you know you could help us with that. And the idea here is to kind of give the sort of the whole uh, team, as it were, a sense of what you know everyone else is thinking. 
So the, the anonymous poll, there's, uh, there's a couple we're gonna do. Um, obviously, if you don't feel comfortable answering the questions, please don't. Um, in any case, the uh, poll results are not recorded um, other than you, know, you see them and then it, it doesn't show up in the recording that we do. It's more, as I said, as an opportunity for, for you all to share each other's uh, thing. So this, we're gonna do two polls at this stage. One is going to be on the urgent and the other one's going to be on the important. Okay, so I'm gonna launch the first one. Hopefully you can see that. Can everybody see that poll? Mm -hmm. I can. Good. So the question is, what makes something urgent? And you can only choose one of these things. My coffee's urgent. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> You have other th more urgent things to worry about that big project you're working on, Kelly. Come on, that's important. <laughs> and urgent. <laughs> Pretty soon I have to rescue those plants myself upstairs. The weather okay. is getting cold. Okay. I've done this the past few days. I'm, I'm done with that. <laughs> okay. It was urgent. <laughs> yes. Okay, so we've got some people responding. It looks like we're going to be, uh, that's going to be the limit. I'm going to end the polling and share results. Must be done. So what we had is three people said must be done soon. Most of the people said significant impacts are anticipated. And, if, and someone had talked about a matter of life and death. Okay, so I'm going to stop that one and do the next poll on important. All right. So with this one, what makes something important? Choose all that apply. Now, Dan, I, I don't know if, if you had mentioned or uh, had mentioned that these polls are um, Simply for our dialogue, they are, uh, we're, we're not um, um, uh, taking them for statistical purposes. Yeah, yeah. In fact, like I said, the, the data isn't, since it's anonymous, plus it doesn't get picked up on the recording. So it's just for us to sort of, if you want to be amused by what people are saying, right? If that's the way to say it, just to get a feel for, you know, how your uh, view of things compares to other people's view of things within this team. It doesn't apply to anybody outside this event, of course. Okay, and the polling and share results. So it looks like most of the responses, eight of the 11 responses went to is relevant to me. So and does anybody, oh, sorry, I didn't, uh, I got stopped and share results yet. Oh yeah, I did, okay. Uh, so that's just a result there. It, uh, just so you know, um, uh, when we wrote that comment about re is relevant to me, we suspected that people would talk about, you know, relevant to their personal life, relevant to their business life. You know, that's the, the concept that we, you know, Kelly and Joanne thought when we wrote that question, we thought that's what it meant. And it looks like from the scoring it, that's exactly what happened. The people but, thought that's what it meant. Dan, but this is, it's not just that, this is mm -hmm. just all that applies. So people yes, did yes. say this impacts many people consider us the needs, so all of that. Yes, so you can tell Joanne is our scientist person. I'm just the guy on the street, so you'll have to. <laughs> Thank if, you. If I say anything <laughs> dumb, just it's just ask Joanne. She'll know the answer. <laughs> Thank you, Dan. I take it as a compliment. <laughs> Sorry, Bridget, you had a question? Um, I, I just thought for me, there was also this inside out or outside in consideration. Yes. <laughs> Find out what's important for me and the urgent one was more I anticipated or I'm pressurized if I say negatively even someone presses me to make this urgent so it's more like an outside 
thing that pushes on to me, whereas with the important, it's more relevant to me. That's why, for example, I, I went for the relevance to me. So it, it had a direction here where I yeah. uh, 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 chose the one or the other. Uh, yeah. I don't know what that was in the in the idea when you. No, no, it's good. This is all very good. And yeah, and I actually wanted you to comment a bit about that because I thought what you said was really revealing in terms of urgent and important. Quite often, are a personal agenda, and I think mm -hmm. that kind of nicely ties into what Burgess is saying. If if you thought it was appropriate to talk about it. Yeah, that is exactly what I was meaning. You know, important is all that you are. You have got important people. So, and the important people make important decisions. Mm -hmm. Now, this was that that choice was not on our original list, and that came from uh, comments on um, um, the house space. Mm -hmm. That's correct. Yes, that's correct. Yeah. So, one of the things that you might want to do because I personally found it very insightful, some of the things that were posted on that beacon. Perhaps uh, later on, you could go to the beacon and take a look at what was said, because there was depth of discussion, which was really quite revealing and insightful for people that want to reflect on that some more. Okay. So we're back to the main screen. So take over, Kelly. Take over. <laughs> okay, so um, clearly I, I must be fatigued. I think okay. I was supposed to uh, give my little speech at this point. <laughs> okay. So maybe we can just move. Um, um, oh, I, I've got, does everyone else have the poll still on their thing? No. Um, no, I took it down. I just had it on mine. Can you take the, 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 the sharing of the, um, yeah. Yeah. Right, here we are. So okay. Joanne, you have to, you you have to, this is yours, Joanne. Uh, so, um, uh, so urgent and importance or important things have a lot to do with where uh, our focus of attention is. So uh, you see two uh, pictures, a beautiful dress and a tag. So when, when my daughter was young and she's 27 uh, this year, so we used to go shopping just two of us, you know, and we would see beautiful dresses, uh, mannequins in display windows, and we'd marvel at how lovely they are. And then that was it. But every time, this is the, the ironic and the strange thing, that every time when we actually need a dress, so for a party, for a wedding, or some special occasion, we would go and then somehow finding the right, a right uh, you know, dress for the occasion became such a trouble. Nothing looks right anymore. It's <laughs> either the size, the style, the color. Um, so that really, it's very um, revealing to me that when um, are just doing, I call it a low resolu uh, resolution browsing. So looking broadly, it doesn't matter. It's a, it's a shopping, it's a dress, even um, you know, groceries, um, because you're not really paying close attention, you're not taking a, you know, a zoomed out view, everything looks great, it's good, but when you take a closer look, when things are truly matter to you, you have a specific perspective going into this, then um, all of a sudden, the requirements comes to play, you can see the, uh, the price tag there, the size, uh, you know, everything. So, so this introduces the local and uh, the distant concept when we were usually evaluating whether something is urgent or important. Now, of course, obviously local and distant has a spatial connotation. That means local meaning this is, you know, relevant to me as a you know, personally, uh, to my family, to my community, to my city, to my country, and distant could mean, yes, something's happening in Australia, so far from Canada, so, hey, 
it's then you take a very low resolution look. Yes, the wild, uh, wild fire is burning in California. Does that matter to me? So I think a COVID situation really put us back into what's uh, our focus. So that's that's my uh, uh, little story for uh, what's in our focus. Mm -hmm. Kelly, Thank back you. to you. Thank you. I, I asked Joanne to tell this story because I thought that, 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 that this was a really wonderful um, uh, I, I, I don't. I don't mean to say common, but um, everyday experience that we have in terms of um, viewing things um, in a distant way, but then when it's necessary, um, coming back in um, to focus in into um, a, a more local or um, detailed uh, fashion. Dan, I'm. I'm looking for where are we in terms of this oh, line? Oh, okay. So we're going to do a breakout now, right? Thank you. And what I need to confirm from with you and Joanne is last time the breakout was for 15 minutes. And uh, I, I thought we may have used more. I don't know. How did your group feel? Was 15 minutes enough or, or, or you know, what was the thinking? Dan, just a set. <laughs> the time because we could go on for hours. I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> go on for hours. <laughs> I know. So that's why I'm asking, Kelly. What do you What do you think? Should I keep it at 15 or you? you know? um, my group. It, it actually felt like we were almost right on time. Okay. And so, um, anybody jump in to see if if they wanted to have more time in the session or not. But if no, no one jumps on quick, then we're going to uh, just keep to that time limit. Okay, I, I put it at 15. I changed the countdown timer to 10 seconds. Okay, mm -hmm. and I'm going to open all the rooms now. Um, all right, so you're sticking me on the... On, on the um, Oh, you know, I mean, a comment that I wanted to bring in terms of a general reference was um, was a comment that was started by Lena in terms of the binary and almost a, a frustration of being having um, to choose. Mm -hmm. if anybody else from our group wants to speak up? Uh, yeah, I can comment. I can sort of reflect on that. Um, yeah, I, I was sharing with the group my frustration with the poll because it right. was, and in this sense, frustration, just to point it out, it's not negative. It's for me, it's very neutral. So I, great. Uh, I felt the frustration that I needed to, to choose and that I, it was, there were so many dimensions which came into mind that made it became sort of a, a binary thing where, whereas I sort of see, um, when I look at what is close to me, I see sort of the, the, the bigger perspective or the global in the local and the other way around. And I think, I also mentioned that I, I, I believe that the, the, one of the things that make us sort of so, so, or one of the abilities, fantastic abilities that the human being has is the one to hold several perspectives. So I think coming back to, your, to what you said, Kelly, with your boss who, when you were struggling with a project, he said to you, you know, go back to your child, that's what's most important. I'm thinking in a way that also frustrates me because I'm thinking, I'm sure that you were still holding the perspective of that important project while you were caring for a child. Just to make it clear, she was an older, um, older woman who uh, was a former librarian. Um, um, I'm not angry with her, <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> And, and, and there's a good possibility that, you know, the priorities are my priorities here. Um, 
I know that my, my children were being well cared for. And, and, you know, maybe that I had lost that focus uh, in terms of where I needed to put those priorities. But I, I just wanted to make the, uh, the reference that it wasn't a, um, a, a male, uh, a, a male um, a comment. Bye, Nick. <laughs> Nick, did you want to speak? No, he was leaving, I think. He just oh. put something oh. in the chat. He was, he's leaving. Oh, okay. I did. I, yeah, I did. I didn't uh, uh, see his chat yet. Um, well, Nick was was talking about um, about the U.S. and um, I. I think that that my group was uh, less North American, um, so I, I don't know if anybody had any references to that. Um, let's see. I like the comment about the Mount not being the territory. And um, I, I don't know if there were, um, if you wanted to expand on that, we, our group probably has uh, certainly a few minutes in case you wanted to uh, come back to that one. All right, I'm gonna call you out soon. Well, maybe probably to you. To elaborate on that so sometimes i think there is um, a certain wisdom in popular quotes um so for example like this one and holding it up and using it as a reflection like when is something just a means to understand something maybe better like when is something a map like a binary it helps me to understand it's a lens um and when is something reality and i'm practicing to differentiate the two and also understand when is something maybe a useful map or a map that i don't want to use anymore because it doesn't serve me and we were talking about this in the context of the binary of the poll, um, but also in context of news and media and ele elections. Thank you. In, in a recent uh, conversation with David Ng uh, for our Systems Ontario group that um, on, when we met, you know, he, he had mentioned about um, there are times where perhaps um, the messaging comes through um, best uh, from a poet or perhaps a comedian. And, the, and, and that was something uh, for my project, should it go forward, I would love for the opportunity to, um, um, to commission either of those two people to be able to take messages of how um, consumer actions and their actions can be taken now uh, for something as large as, as climate change. Can I, can I make an addition to the, the map is not a territory? It's a, it's a quote from uh, Korzybski, I think. And he added the semicolon. Uh, he added that the structure of the map makes it useful. So the structure of the map is the same as the structure of the streets or the hills or the mountains. And the structure of a map makes it useful. And it's the same with systems thinking. It's not the system that makes it useful, it's the structure of the system that makes it useful. The problem only is, is that we cannot uh, perceive the structure of things. You know, you see only the outside of the thing, so you don't see the structure of a building, except when you're an architect, they look at it and say, oh, that's a beautiful structure, and I don't see it, because we see an architect, so he knows about the structure of a building. And, uh, and that's the... And then the, the second thing is, is that our language is also a system, also a model. So the problem is in the structure of the language. So our, uh, and our language is structured as a command and control language. So because we have a, a command and control structure, we tend to, 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 to have a conversation in terms of goals and priorities and uh, controlling the results of, of actions. And this is not a fact or not a, not a thing from the natural system. This is made up by us through language. And this has been my main concern for the past 20 years. So it's in the grammar, actually. Yeah, our languages don't have possessive pronouns. Yep. For example, uh, sedentary people, uh, if you build a city or if you build a farm, 
you get properties if you are uh, how you call it uh, moving people moving around across the, the savanna you can't have properties with you so you have a different language your language reflects the structure of your language reflects the structure of your um, of your natural domain mm. well um Yannick, I mean, for both your your comment as well as as Jan's, um, you know, the language and the structure are, are useful only to those in power. Exactly. And, yeah, the, the, we we could have that um, different dialogue in terms of uh, the power struggle for many of the communities and and issues that um, are important to to many of us in terms of um, uh, creating change. What comes to mind, uh, top of mind for me in that is uh, the example that I was giving about our First Nations uh, struggle in terms of um, uh, certainly where those lines are drawn on a map. But I think of people in power. Yeah, and, but uh, as, soon, as soon as you draw lines on a map, you've got a struggle. So the drawing of lines creates a struggle. That's, uh, that's part of the, the way so uh, people who don't draw lines on a map don't have these types of struggles. Uh, and so uh, was speaking up, and I'm not quite sure who that was. I sorry. It was Joanne that wanted to do yeah, a bit I, of a summary. Just okay. no, no. I just want to comment on uh, power because the power it's a, is such a multitude of things in different layers. Parents may have power over their children. Um, you know, children looking after. Uh, their parents may have a power over them. So it's it's not just government. I think I think we have to look at the invisible powers uh, throughout and the language and structure evidently shape the how uh, we, all of us, uh, talk and think um, uh, in our daily lives. Thank you, um, Nyon, for bringing that up. Uh, um, Yeah, our, uh, the, our language has been structured in order to control a group, uh, which makes sense when you are trying to survive in a savanna or in a desert or in the mountains. But it doesn't make sense anymore when you've got a, a complicated society as we have, are facing now. So we are slowly, that's what I'm doing now, I'm trying to slowly uh, create a different grammar, a different grammar of engagement. That's what you do as a facilitator. Technically, what I'm doing is changing the conversation by disrupting it. Mm, that's very interesting, Jan. How do you do that? How do you go about? Uh, well, usually by asking uh, the question nobody asks. For instance, I would ask, what kind of system is a system? Mm -hmm. Or a system is like? Because we all assume, I assume that we all have a different image about the system. But we treat it as if we know we understand what we're talking mm -hmm. about. So usually I let it go a conversation for about 20 minutes and then I ask just a simple uh the, the first word they meant they, they used in a in a conversation, and I repeat it. And what do you so I, I used to be in, in the system engineering and this I got a degree in information system design. And I always asked uh, people, okay, what do you think a system is? And no, never take it for granted that people know what I'm talking about. Well, from a science I'm sorry. perspective, um, I don't know if Joanne or Di, uh, or Dan wants to jump in in terms of like, well, how how, how do we as a systems changes uh, group uh, define what a system is? In general, is the environment we uh, inhabit really the issues where. Uh, the environment where the issues reside. Uh, that's really, you need to look beyond the, and one important thing I think Young had brought up is we ourselves as change makers must be, put ourselves in that system, in that very system, instead of taking an outsider view, thinking, I hey, I'm going you. down. Um, so you have to be part of that before you can even feel it and experience it. And so that, um, so that's um, that's how I um, see it. It's it's uh, in um, um, uh, Kniven. I think it's a Welsh word that means um, habitat. So how do you really understand uh, the environment where the issue 
reside. And uh, there's a beautiful iceberg model that uh, ha have been used, has been used for, for uh, many, many years by many different uh, professions to illustrate how do you get down from the event, the behavioral level of the exterior into the interior of people and things systems. Well, well, that might be the reason why when I first uh, uh, came into systems thinking that I f thought that I fell down a rabbit hole. And <laughs> there were times that I wondered, where am I? Because I actually didn't, have, you know, didn't have that, um, that, that frame of reference uh, to, to where I was uh, coming from a creative uh, um, area where you know, for, for forecasting and design intelligence, we are looking always to the edge in terms of what are those um, 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 def things that exist in terms of change, but it is not um, clearly in, in the normative. So having that, um, that piece where I'm forever bumping up against a, a, st a formal structure uh, and, and what is possible or what is the norm uh, when my normal habitat is actually on the edge. Yes, and what I tend to use is the informal structure. Mm -hmm. So whenever there's a formal structure, there's also an informal structure. Uh -huh. And what you can rely on is that the informal structure will do the work. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like the, well, that's why we call it informal. It forms itself. That's also why we call it information, by the way. Well, I'll have to share that with, with uh, David Ng because he is forever um, telling us to, um, that the structure has to be open and not uh, um, uh, defined. Is, it, is that uh, clear, Dan, uh, uh, the actual uh, reference that, that David has made? Uh, well, I don't know what, oh, oh, no, what he meant. I, I usually say from a, a structure, structure's emptiness. Yeah, sorry, I, I meant Dan, and I don't know if Dan has gone off. Yeah, I'm back now. I just had to had a delivery. I wanted to make sure I got it. Sorry. Okay. So did, the structure is usually I... covering up the emptiness. But deep down in every structure, there is, is emptiness. Because we are afraid of the emptiness, we create structures. Mm -hmm. I'm not against structures. Uh, so everything has structure, but most structures develop by themselves. So uh, I, I studied biophysics and in, uh, the remarkable thing about living things is that they organize themselves. Mm -hmm. There is no plan, there is no vision, there is no strategy, and still they grow. How can they grow without roots? <laughs> you know, how can a fish grow without roots? So, and, uh, and we tend to uh, ignore the fact that everything organizes itself so we try to to to, uh, to 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 control the system, and uh, and by controlling the system, we we uh, destroy it. In the in the Netherlands, for instance, we we created the polders, and eh? we we created the country from the sea. But there is a picture by uh, Rijkswaterstaat, who is responsible for the seaways, in which they point out that when we didn't uh, create dikes and canals there would be no problems with inundation. But because we have created canals and dikes, we have created a problem with flooding. And the higher the, uh, we build our dikes, the bigger the disasters we're going to create. It's elementary. Mm -hmm. So, um, and, this is, uh, and this is because we try to control our natural environment. And the natural environment doesn't care about it. You can try to control it as much as you like. In the end, it will kick back. So, oh, and that is also how I treat the thing like uh, COVID-19. It's just nature. Uh, it's, it's not even conscious of doing it. It's because we are conscious that we attribute this to it. It just happens. It's, uh, and it will happen. And it will happen again and again. So nothing, uh, nothing to see here. Mm. But, but that I think and, and, that, and, that's, and, and that's, that's what I also uh, learned at at, uh, at the university. Uh, I, I studied physics, experimental physics, and then you have to let go of understanding. That's the most difficult part of it because when you uh, understand something, you immediately start to control it. But you have to understand things without uh, wanting to control it. You know, it's like playing with things.
I think this is really this is really fascinating, Jan. And it, I, I'm when I hear you speak, I connect it. Uh, I co connect it to this this um, uh, this sort of ambition that companies have today to uh, define uh, or sort of go even take the the the, the culture of the environment and try to control it by defining, for example, uh, the core values or a defined vision as a way to create some kind of social efficiency. Yeah. And at least in Sweden, people, people embrace this as something positive, while in reality, it's, it's, it's like you say, it's, it's nothing else but a very sort of effective tool to make a group of people Act in a very sort of well, the, the, non chaotic the, the, way, very streamlined the paradox, way. The, the central paradox from Chris Edgeris, who who, uh, who coined yeah. the term uh, organizational learning, mm. which was then transformed by Peter Senge in learning organizations. Yeah. And learning organizations don't exist, there's only the process of organizational learning. And his main uh, axiom or paradox was. Learning in order to control behavior inhibits learning. So learning in order to control behavior inhibits learning. And what organizations want to do is they want to learn, but at the same time they want to control the learning. And that inhibits, it prevents them from learning. And when that's I read it, when, when I was studying it's... for my MBA, I thought, okay, that's that's a smart remark. So Kick in an open, kick in an open an other door. I, I've, I've also got a teacher degree, by the way, so I know you can't control a class by ordering them to learn. So, but then I got to work with uh, with some companies, and everybody tries to 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 on one hand try to learn, and at the same time control the results. And you can't do that. Mm. So, as a facilitator, I don't control the results. And at the same time, because I want to have an assignment, I pretend I can do that. Yeah, of course, you can get results, no problem. Exactly, the Trojan horse. And yeah, I, I used to be a program, a project manager and a program manager. And once I was asked, are you going to stay within budget and within time? And I said, I always am within budget and within time. I never deliver what was requested. And that's true. I never deliver what is requested, but I'm always within time and budget. Yeah. But as soon as you let an organization organize itself, <laughs> it will organize itself. This is an interesting conversation between Jan and Lena. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, no. Just cut me no, short. No, no, no problem. Wonderful. I don't take <laughs> offense. I, I just so before we leave Jan there. In our group, we, uh, we did something very bold. We've uh, commandeered Jan to give us a little session, okay? Because mm. lots of stuff you heard today. And what I will do is, if it's okay with you, I'll send out the invite. Once I get it all set up with Jan, which time he's available and all that, I'll send out the invite to the rest of the folks uh, besides the people that were in our, in our session because you could tell from what he's been saying, it's been very insightful, very revealing and thought provoking. And I, and I do hope that uh, that works. Okay. He's agreed, Thank so that's you. good. <laughs> Thank you. Can't wait. Okay. Now, yeah. just to do a time check, uh, Kelly, we're at 11.13, you know that, right? Yeah. Which is uh, kind of like way beyond what we thought was gonna happen, I think. We're happy about it, right? Um, what do people wanna do, I guess? The, the thing is, um, I, I was thinking that there might be some value in looking at how we've changed, how we reorder priorities, if that makes any sense, Kelly, like skip to that part. Does that make any sense to you? Yeah. That was a yes? Yes, thank you. Okay, so I'm gonna uh, scroll the screen there first. If it works, come on, scroll. Yes, babe, you're there. Yeah, it's been oh. long. Okay, so, as I said, there's lots of slides that we're going to skip through, but the one, one, the one slide we really wanted to at least talk about, I know that it's going to be a bit of a rush for some people who have to go off, but in which way should we reorder priorities for our system changes? Anybody want to take that on? 
Well, hang on. Um, can I just get a time check here? Are we going um, for another 40, 45 minutes or, or just 15? Well, like technically we were only supposed to do an hour and a half. Uh, uh, Kelly, uh, okay. Sorry. Right. And we're at 1115. So that would make it two hours. I kind of think we extended our stay there. No, because so, we started at 930. Yeah. And it's 1115 according to my clock here. Uh, 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 oh, I'm so sorry. I yeah, apologize so, to everyone. Yeah, yeah. So it wouldn't be fair. I don't want to keep people here Absolutely. sort of, especially since we, more importantly, we've got Jan to agree to do another session. So I, I think we have an opportunity to uh, kind of give people a chance to do that. But we should try to answer this yeah. question, I think, because yeah. this, this is what it's all about, right? Yeah. yeah. This is what it's all about. So I don't know who we start off with. Maybe we could start off with Jan if he's prepared to answer that. Yep. Go. I already answered it in the chat. I know, but for the rest of the people. <laughs> Plans are nothing. Planning is everything. So I don't, I'm not against planning and plans, but you have to plan and replan again. You need to plan in order to reschedule your priorities. And the only thing you can do is every day, and that I did when I was uh, working as a, as, a, as a manager, just every morning we had a 15 minute uh, talk about our priorities and how we should reorder them. Well, let's take this up um, in, in your, um, um, your, your session coming up. That, that was, that's a wonderful um, opportunity and thank you. Mm -hmm. yeah. Very thing, I wrote very thing. <laughs> yes. That's okay, that's we understand. Yes, yes. How does it look it's in very nice work. Your... I think I keep it very thing. <laughs> <laughs> Trademark. How does your time look in the next couple of weeks? Should we think about that way? You and I will get together and we'll can arrange a time, but the next couple of weeks would be good. Yeah, that's fine. What's your, yeah? Okay. Okay, so and, Dan, can you move on with the slides? Yeah, we can do that. So this is the uh, bit about uh, some of the stuff we're, uh, we're working on in our learning circle. Really better answers or better questions, okay? Our five learnings. Yeah. Okay, and we're in year two of the uh, System Changes Learning Circle based out of Toronto. Um, a lot of work to be done, although we've done some good work, I think, and you could tell from our discussions that we've had some good sort of uh, building to that point. And we certainly have um, international um, colleagues that are on with us. Yes, yes. And uh, we, just, we just came out of an RSD conference. I don't know, do you go to that? Anybody go to that thing? <laughs> some of us did. And we had a good reception there. So uh, kind of moving things along. These are things where we're really questioning, are we, right, are we solving the right problems? And the, and the point here is that type three and type four errors are really solving the wrong problems. One, we're tricking others and the other case we're tricking um, ourselves. Okay, system so can be and as a whole that can be divided into independent parts. Um, I don't think that's too shocking. We, we coined the term here a system of interest. And earlier, I think Kelly asked the question, like what is the, uh, what is the boundary for a system? And essentially, I think Joanne was suggesting that we look at issues and whatever those issues are, that's within the system of interest. Okay, authentic system thinking talks about synthesis preceding analysis. This is kind of a good illustration on why do uh, British uh, people drive on the left? Uh, really, if you look at a car and you analyze everything about the car, what's inside the car, what the shape, it's not going to help you understand why people are driving on the left. It turns out that that uh, process has been really colored or determined by what was historically a need for people on knights in particular fighting on horses and they wanted to keep their right arm free for like, swinging a sword and using their spears and whatever. So that's the reason why they, they uh, you know, did it that way. And do you know why we drive on the right side? No idea. Because of Napoleon. Oh, okay. He, he a... had a logistical problem with his army. So they designed a carriages with six horses, uh -huh. but you cannot manage six horses from the, be from the back of the carriage. So yeah. the guy had to sit on the left horse, yes. last of horse, so he could manage with his right hand. And then you have to drive on the right side. Oh, wow. That so that forces cool. the Europeans to drive on the left, on the right side. That is way cool. Blame so it the on British the podium. never caught on then. You're saying the British never caught on to that. No, they were not, uh, they were not, uh, they, they resisted Napoleon. Oh yes, of course, of course. 
Thank and you I that. think the Swedes <laughs> changed sides in the 60s or something. Oh, cool. All right, so, we'll go okay. on to the next one here. I'm blasting through this, but as you know, I'm going to be sharing the recording with you once I clean it all up, okay? So you don't have to be too worried about missing anything in particular. Although we will be, as, as I suggest, convening a session with uh, Jan, and I'm sure we'll go over some of these topics again. So this is the magic slide, as I like to say. This is the crux of what we do. And what, you, what I'm always impressed by is that our chief scientist, David Ng, he embraced five different schools of philosophy. Um, this is obviously very complicated and I can't explain all of it, but I will draw your attention to two areas that are of particular at least interest to me and commonly uh, is of interest. And that is around wicked messes. So these are problems that, uh, so network of problems that cannot be solved. Um, and then the other area is around techni or how, uh, unfreeze, delt change, and then freeze. I, I highlighted these two because they're popular in, when we talk to people about systems thinking, this is where they spend some time. And it's a bit, the, the question of how or techni really is closer to what, uh, you know, Jan has been saying today. And that is that we try to get to the answer. We try to, even if we don't know what the problem is, we try to get to the answer. And this is, this is something that we're, we're very intent on doing and we get trapped by that. And of course, for people who do change management, this thing about um, how or techni is really troubling for them. And uh, that's one reason why I pointed it. Okay. I think that's it for me. This is our uh, landmark thing. These are potholes, just if you're wondering, <laughs> representing systems, of course. And this is our uh, information. We, up, we have all that contact information up on the uh, beacon. Um, I do urge you to read some of the comments on the beacon. They really lend a lot of, uh, of lively, of, yeah, meat to what what was discussed today, and certainly uh, what Jan has uh, been discussing. So, I'm not sure if I missed anything out, uh, Joanne do, or Kelly. Do I should I say anything else here? No, but please, please, everyone, um, give us your comments, uh, positive, negative. Uh, we are a learning group, and and we we certainly appreciate your feedback. Yes. Oh, the Australians drive on the left. I knew that because uh, Catherine was just adding Australians drive on the left because I, I was in Australia oh, some years ago and I loved how the roundabouts worked. I was just like taking them at a clip, probably illegally. I, I'm glad Catherine wasn't there to stop me because I was just taking those, uh, those roundabouts with a real clip. And the bad news is because you drive on the left. Sometimes I, I think I may have, you know, if I wasn't careful, I could have hit somebody because I was driving so fast. <laughs> <laughs> I, I always thought it was because island nations, uh, they, they didn't want to fall off the road. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're talking about Cape Breton now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I hope everybody enjoyed it. I thoroughly enjoyed it. <laughs> uh, I enjoyed it too. Thank you. Right. Yeah, it was great. Absolutely. Yes, thank you, Kristen. Enjoyed it. Okay. Uh, the team, if you could just stay on the line for a minute, I just want to do a deep brief. Okay, well, thank you for everyone joining. Thank you, everyone. Session. Thank you, everyone. Take care. Bye. Bye. See you all again, I hope. Yeah.